Good morning boys and girls and welcome to Shen Plays. I'm your host Shenra and today we're going to be poking some Kerbals here in Kerbal Space Program. So people have been asking me to show more of the ship development process that I go through. So why don't we hop in with just from the ground up we'll build something from scratch. Um, let's make uh well, you know, I do. I have unlocked all the rover parts, but why don't we... Uh, let's do another lander first, just to show you what I do uh, to make a lander work. First and foremost, we have a lander can. There's two to choose from. Uh, there's a lander can Mark II, which weighs 2.5 and carries one Kerbal. And there's a lander can Mark I, which weighs 0 0.6 and carries one Kerbal. The only real difference between them is uh, how much torque they have uh, the, with the... With the included SAS, the Lander Mark II has 15 torque, whereas the Lander Mark I only has 3 torque. However, uh, it uses 18 charge per minute electric charge, and this one uses 45 charge per minute. So that's the only real difference. A manufacturer is Jebedi Kerman's Junkyard, and this one's manufactured by Sean's Cannery <laughs> instead of Sean Connery. Anyway, uh, they both have a drag point too. They both have... Um, decent maximum temperatures and impact tolerance. Yeah, it's all fine. Uh, why don't we go with a Mark II, because I've never used one before. We'll, we'll, we'll lift a Mark II. Uh, it looks like a deluxe cam, right? Instead of just the instead of just the boxy cam. Oh yeah, it's even bigger. It's cute. Bigger. It's probably not necessary. The, the main difference is just that it'll have better SAS controls, right? It'll be able to uh, twist and turn more easily. Uh, even though it weighs more. Nah, screw it. Screw it. I'm so used to the number one. We'll use the number one. Stupid, useless Mark two. Anyway, so we'll do a number one. <laughs> let's do a number one. And let's build a lander around this little box. So, obviously we're going to need to do some science if we're going to be landing somewhere. So, let's do that. Uh, and then beneath that, let's put uh, a little battery for some juice, because you're going to need juice. And what else could we possibly need? Oh, you know what? Why don't we make a complicated lander? Let's make a lander that's going to be able to return. Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe return, right? So if we want to return somewhere, we're going to need a coupler. We're going to need... Um, we're going to be able to drop off everything that is just excess weight. Uh, and for returning, well, I guess we don't need the science box if it's going to be returning. Yeah, we'll move the science box out. Bingo. That way we'll just decouple all the um, science-y stuff, because we'll have already sent all the science data back home. No problem. Okay, on top here we're going to need some parachutes. That's right, parachutes. Uh, we could do um, a big box parachute on top, uh, but eh, it's probably not the best thing ever. Let's do the side panel parachutes. We'll just put four of them on. Put it on four-way symmetry with the angle snap, and then just put some parachutes on. Oh, they don't want to fit? There we go. <laughs> they didn't want to fit, but they do fit. No problem. Four is overkill, but whatever <laughs> we can even use these on on other surfaces and um, repack them the Kerbals can actually repack parachutes but eh, don't really feel like we need to uh, okay what else do we need on lander we're gonna need some photovoltaic cells but we don't need them to be on this particular module I think we can let them be somewhere else uh, we're gonna need more sciency bits sciency bits so let's get a um, Every single type of sciencey bit that we can find. Let's put one over here. Let's put this one on the back. I wish these things were a little larger. That's what she said. Just because sometimes it's hard to see them on your device. More sciencey bits. And then a thermometer. So there's only like four or five different kinds of sciencey bits. There's the science box itself, which is large. And then there's uh, mystery goo which is very large as well. I tend to like to put one mystery goo on. I see most people when they're doing these, they do two mystery goos just because you need to balance the weight on your boat. 
But I usually just do one mystery goo and just put it on the top. It'll work. What else do we need? We need uh, some type of transmission device. We could do um, a big transmitter or a little transmitter. It's not going to fit there, is it? How much do these weigh? 0 0.025, 0 0.005, 0 0.03. I think we'll do these. What's the difference? Ah, how quickly can they send out data? Well, I don't really care. Ah, throughput 0 0.8, throughput 0 0.4, throughput 0 0.6. Packet size 2.0. We'll use these. <laughs> Why not? Whatever. Just do two-way symmetry. Uh, put them on... Put them on the science box. Put them on the decoupler. <laughs> put them on the decoupler. Whatever. That looks horrible. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It looks like a bug. Okay, so we have all of our science. We have um, a battery. We could probably do with an SAS on here. If we can find one. There we go. SAS under the battery. Then we're going to need a tank. We're going to need a fuel tank. I like to use the fat wide one because it provides a wonderful base for uh, some lander legs. If I can find the lander legs. There we are. Put it on um, maybe six legs or eight legs. Eh, six legs should be fine. Doesn't really matter. And then underneath that, we're going to need some type of uh, engine. Now, this doesn't weigh much. This entire assembly up here for our lander does not weigh very much. So this 909 engine will probably be just fine. So one of those, just slap it on there. And there's our lander. That's pretty much done. Make sure the stages are fine. We have an engine. We have a decoupler and then we have the parachute and the capsule. Yeah, that's all we need. Uh, what else do we want on here? Mm, ah, photovoltaic cells. That's right. So let's put those in eight-way symmetry. How much do those weigh? 0 0.05. Yeah, they weigh almost nothing. Just put them right here on the can. That way, anything that's... Fa oh, actually, let's see if we can't put them up at an angle. Can you go at an angle? There. That way they will um, be available to get sunlight, either sun facing directly up or at some of the sides. It should be able to get some sunlight from the sides as well. And it looks cool too. Uh, what else do we need? Well, that's pretty much it. I think our lander is good to go. Yeah, I think it is. So let's give it a uh, means of travel, right? Let's first focus on interspace travel. Once we're up in space, we won't need a whole lot of thrust. So I usually go with atomic engines. Because they're very fuel efficient. Although they do weigh a lot. So we need a decoupler to go between the lander and whatever else we're going to attach. So let's get a decoupler. Yep. And beneath the decoupler, we need to attach some more engines. Uh, let's do... What do we want to do? We could do like a four-way or a three-way or a two-way. I haven't done any space planes yet, but you can make space planes. Uh, is it under structural? Ah, there we go. Quad decoupler, tri decoupler, and the bi decoupler. Or coupler, not decoupler. Stack the coupler. Oh, tiny little thing, huh? Separator? Huh. Separator. I don't really know what the difference is between a decoupler and a separator. Uh, the separators use less mass. That might be nice. Ah, okay. Okay, well, why don't we try some some of those then? Because I'm not sure we need the couplers. I mean, oh, that's a little tiny, huh? Right. Does this come in bigger sizes? 
There we go. Or a giant size. <laughs> and we'll use the medium size ones. I, just because it fits the engine. And up here as well. I've never used a separator before. Oh, they actually take more mass. Well, what's the point? Jettison everything attached to them. This new technology was very well received. Rocket engine error. Not bad for something that started out as a failure for control. Ah, whatever. We'll try it out. I'm not sure what the hell the difference is. Okay, you need to be on two-way mirror, and we'll put you on the sides. Because we can. Uh, looks okay. Looks incredibly weird. But, you know, weird is good, right? Nothing's wrong with weird. And then down here we need some fuel or... Well, yeah, that's the question. Do we want to do some quad or some dual? Dual looks like that. Huh. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm amused so easily. Yeah, why don't we try a, a dually? I've never tried a dually before. Attachment point. What the hell is an attachment point? That's interesting. Okay, let's go back and let's throw in some fuel tanks. Uh, use the long, narrow ones. There we go. Looking good so far. And then on the end here, we'll do um, uh, something with a bit of thrust. 200 might be too much. No, let's just go ahead. We'll stick with the atomics. They they weigh a lot, but they get the job done. Yeah. Okay, atomics on there, and then we're gonna need maybe a little space tape. Hold this shit together. There we go. So you won't have too much jiggling, and they won't uh, smack against each other when you're performing maneuvers and shit. Space tape is amazing, but it does have weight, so don't use it, you know, without keeping in mind the weight, the mass. All right, and then around this, why don't we put uh, some more decouplers. Looks good, and some more. And I bet we could fit one in the middle too. Um, how tough is that going to be? I'm not sure that's going to work. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, before we get too excited about anything, why don't we just try this without any decouplers and make sure this thing can actually, you know, do something. Just by itself. Let's get rid of these weak engines and put on some strong ones. Uh, 215, 200. Yeah, it's fine. Let's just see if this thing can lift off. So what are the stages that we have? We have the engines and then the separate... Uh, engines and then the separator. Yeah. Okay. Give it a name. We're gonna call it um, experimental. We'll call it a uh, lander experiment MK1. This is not a test. Repeat. You may be seriously injured or die. This is not a test. You know, just in case uh, we have a Kerbin on board. I think we're going to have... Jill Sill's going to be on board. All right, Jill Sill. All right. We've made it out to the launch pad. Uh, I think we're ready to go. We might want to get another SAS or something in here. That SAS may not be enough. Yeah, it may not be. Anyway, let's go ahead and throttle up. And launch. All right, looks good.
Josel's loving it. And he's like, I'm in a big old yeah, white penis. That's right. Josel, you're in a white penis. We're shooting off towards the sun. You're going to go join Jeb around the sun. That sound, let's test the landing gear. Hey, look at that. Go landing gear. Nice. Put the gear away. How's the view from inside there? Looks good. And we're about to get rid of our engines and the fuel tanks. The separator should do that. And we're not going to be able to land with this thing. That little 909 is not going to be enough to uh, support us here on Kerbal. But uh, we could use it to maneuver a little bit, and then we can test out the parachutes. Okay, there goes the separator. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. So yeah, we can go... Uh, let's go over there. We're not going to get very far, but that's okay. Put the lander legs out again, just for shits and giggles. Whee! <laughs> I'm not sure if that increases drag. It probably does not. And then let's shut off the engine. And use the separator again. There we go. And now let's rotate upwards. And we'll just let things fall for a bit. The separators aren't that bad. They do way more than the um, decouplers, but eh, if it gets the job done. How's it going, Jill? So, oh, he's having the time of his life. He's like, I'm in a spaceship. Look at me. Oh, Jill. So. Now we have four parachutes on here. It should be plenty of um, plenty of parachute to get the job done. So we'll do that. And they should um, they should catch the air around maybe 800 meters, maybe 500 meters, or whatever. They don't actually do anything uh, until you get to that point when they open. Right now, I don't think they add any drag at all right now. Although we are slowing down. Maybe they do. We are slowing down. Maybe they do add drag. Hmm. It's definitely going to be slow enough for a safe recovery. Oh, Jilso's happy about that. He's like, yay, I'm going to be recovered safely. I'm not going to die like all the other Kerbals. <laughs> oh, all the other Kerbals. Why would you even think about other Kerbals, Jilso? Come on. you got to be selfish in this industry. If you want to get ahead, you got to think of numero uno. Right? Let's do a crew report. Sounds good. Keep that data. Para pack pack shoot here. Yeah, we can we can practice packing parachutes. I've never tried it before. People have told me I could even use parachutes just on other planets and then repack them, and then just keep using them again over and over. I didn't know that was even possible. There we go. Now we can speed up time a bit. You don't want to speed up time while your chutes are getting ready to deploy, but once they've deployed, you can speed up time. All right, come on down, Jill. So, oh, look at him. He's dancing. He's like, yeah, I went to space. I'm an astronaut or Kerbal knot, micronaut, whatever you are. You are something, Jill. So, yeah, I tend to do this with, with uh, my rockets. I just shoot them up really, really early. Uh, test all the staging, make sure stuff separates properly, make sure you have the leftover parts that you want um, after you've separated everything. And make sure it'll land. If, if you want it to land somewhere, make sure it'll frickin' land. Alright, little gentle touch. 3.1 meters a second. That's actually pretty fast, but this thing's a beast. It can take it. Alright, let's hop out. Let's see if... Uh, well, first of all, let's uh, let go. Get me a soil sample here. 
Oh, look at that. It's worth almost nothing. Get me an EVA report. It's worth almost nothing. And repack the chute, eh? Oh, it's like instant. He doesn't even have to walk around and pick up the parachute. It's just instant. Wow. Anyway, get back get back in. You're done. And let's recover this. Okay, so we're back here at our design room. Let's get rid of these weak little engines, because we're not going to use the weak ones on, on this segment. Uh, but I think I do want to move... Do I want to move the SAS down there or not? No, I think what we'll do is we'll put the SAS down like that. And then I want the SAS down here. Yep. Perfect. And we want the little weak rockets on here. Atomic rockets, very good. And um, around them, well, is that going to separate properly? Where do the um, pieces go when we put uh, our separators in? Really, it won't fit? Why not? What about the decouplers? Decouplers fit. Interesting. Um, yeah, let me try this out. I want to see um, where these parts come off. Alright, so what I'm looking for here is when we use the separators here, the, the, whatever it is, and we take these covers off of these engines, these sheath covers, uh, I want to see where the covers go. So let's detach them manually. Ah, okay, they go sideways. Perfect. Because with these there is the possibility that they will be oriented incorrectly and they will go they will detach covers into each other and that can actually cause an explosion so these are actually lined up properly they're going to detach covers away from each other that's perfect alrighty so the covers are on properly you can always orient these uh, engines manually with the WASD and you can use that to rotate them make sure you do that if you're going to be using the atomics because these things these covers gotta make sure they go uh, away from each other rather than against rather than into the other engine okay uh, so we're going to need uh, some more staging around here some more decouplers There you go, two-way symmetry. Okay. That may be too far apart, actually. That may be better. We'll see. I wonder how many freaking engines we can fit on this thing. Probably a lot. Because they're very narrow. Wow. That is a lot. That is six off of each thing. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, yeah, that's six off of each thing. Why does it look like the ones on the left are more compact? Oh, because they are. Let's go with five off of each thing instead of six. Like that. There you go. Five off of each instead of six. That'll be better. You don't want them too close together. Okay, now we need some more fuel tanks. Throw them on. Don't know why you don't want to fit there. We'll put you over here. Bingo. They don't have to be perfect, but I try to make them perfect. I, I don't think there's any way to make them vertically uh, exactly the same. I wish I really wish there was like you could just have a little measuring stick out and be like yep this one's there this one's there this one's there there's no way to do that it's a little awkward because you, you probably do want the engines to be 
at about the same height, right? Anyway. Uh, need our engines. There we go. This is a very weird design, I'll tell you that much. And we're never going to need this much fuel. This is an insane amount of fuel. I usually complain about having too much fuel, and this is way more than I've ever used ever. <laughs> this is 12 atomic engines. Wow. That's excessive. Like, massively excessive. I cannot ever n imagine needing that many. That's what she said. But, <laughs> there we have it. They exist. Deal with it. Okay. So, let's organize our staging here and our fuel. We're going to need these to go in an S pattern. So, this one is going to go to this one. I have two-way symmetry on, so that should do it on the other side as well. It does. Okay, good. And then this one to that one. And so on. Huh. I think that'll still work. Yeah, that'll still work. It's not... <laughs> God, that's going to be so weird. Oh, it's going to be hilarious. I hope this works. I have not tried an asparagus system like this before. But we'll give it a shot. And then from the outside to the inside. There we go. So basically the fuel drains from this tank to this tank to this tank to this tank to that tank to the middle. And it does that on both sides. So this is, this side is independent from this side. That's usually how an asparagus system works. Uh, but I've never done it with this many fuel tanks before. So I hope this actually works. In fact, this might lift off the ground. Probably not. You know what? Let's find out if this thing lifts off the ground. Alright, we're on the launch pad. SAS on. Throttle up. Let's just see if this thing launches. No. <laughs> yeah, the atomic engines, there's no way they're going to be able to launch anything. They are going to heat up, though. You can watch them heat up. I love that. The color actually adds... The color goes from gray to red as they heat up. It's awesome. Jill says love it. Let's see if the uh, staging works. It's about to separate two of them. Oh, I didn't actually stage them. Turn off the engines then. Uh, okay, so this one goes first, so we need that part. That is that. And is it that same one on the other side? It should be. Yeah. Okay, we need a new stage right here for those. Why don't we just do this in the um, 